So for this problem, um, primary that you're looking at. Ms. White, we have a conference and guidance. Ms. White, conference and guidance. Thank is you. Is we need to figure out what the sine of a double angle is, right? So obviously, if we're going to use the sine of a double angle, we're going to have to use that formula, right? You know what the formula is? It's in your book. And that's going to be 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. So that's where um, that comes from. So sine, sine of 2 theta equals 2 sine of theta times cosine of theta. So if I'm asking you to find the cosine um, equal to negative 5 over 9, um, what I need to do, I'm sorry, if I need to find the sine of 2 theta, I need to figure out what sine of theta is and what cosine of theta is. Well, I already know what cosine of theta is. Cosine of theta is negative 5 over 9. But I need to figure out what sine of theta is. Then it also says it has to be within the tangent of theta, which is less than 0. So I need to determine when is tangent less than 0. Do you know off the top of your head which one it is? Tangent less than 0, uh, non terminated. OK. Remember, these are your x and your y coordinates, right? In the first quadrant, your x coordinate is positive and your y coordinate is positive, right? Remember, tangent is y over x. So when you have a positive or a positive, that's always going to make a positive, right? When you have a negative or a negative, that's going to make a positive. That leaves these two quadrants to be negative, OK? So if I'm going to write the triangle for a negative 5 over 9, 9 is always going to be your hypotenuse. Well, it has to be, it has to be a negative 5. It can't be down here, because that would be tangent would be positive. So therefore, I have negative 5 and 9. Well, to find sine, I need to figure out what my opposite sign is. So I do Pythagorean theorem. Let's write it this way. x squared plus negative 5 squared equals 9 squared. So I get x squared equals, geez, plus 25 equals 81. Subtract the 25 x squared is going to equal, um, what is it now, it's, uh, um, 36, right? No, 36, it's going to equal, um, what am I doing? That's not right. 81 plus 25. 52. Yeah, but that was something else was different that I was thinking of when I was doing this problem. Is that right, Sean? Yeah, okay. Um, take the square root, take the square root. It's not right, what is that? That's different. Hmm. Okay, well, the end, you have the square root of 56. Oh, that was a problem in the book. Never mind, I was thinking of a different problem. Okay. So we have x equals the square root of 56. Right? And we think about that, can we reduce you know, the square root of 56? What number goes into uh, 56? So we look at 9. Does 9 go into 56? Mm -hmm. How many times? This one? No. Oh, oh, oh. 9 times 6 is 54, so 9 doesn't go in there. The next square number is 16. Um, does 16 go into there? No. no. 25 doesn't go into there? No. 36 doesn't go in there. So that's going to be your um, square root of 56. So that's going to be just right there. So. We can say that's going to be the square root of 56. So therefore, sine of theta, so cosine of theta is negative 5 over 6, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Make sense? So now, all we got to do is just plug them in. So sine of 2 theta equals 2 times sine of theta, which is radical 56 over 9 times cosine of theta, which is negative 5 over 9. And then all you do is just multiply. So we get negative 10 radical 56 over 81. Okay. That's it. Okay. And then that's it. Um, so sine of 2 theta is negative 10 80 to 51. And you see if you can reduce it. So that would be it. Make sense? So remember.